Hey guys, so I am sitting in my car waiting to pick up my kids from school. Um, our licensing agency is coming out today. So if you don't, if you haven't been following along, licensing agencies are the people who make sure that your house is in order so that you can um, maintain your license to foster. And um, ours, so we've had two. Our first one, they would do like quarterly checks. So they would like check our, to make sure that our medicine was locked up and our like fire smoke alarms were working and all the stuff you have to have to get licensed. They do that every quarter. Our current agency does it every month. And then I have other friends that I know that are foster parents who their agencies like never come out. So it just depends on how involved your agency is, uh, at least in the state of Arizona, as to how much um, involvement you're going to have to deal with from them. With ours, they want to see the girls every month. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of... It's a little frustrating for me just because, like... How do I put this? There, there's got to be some way that they're accountable to the state for the number of kids that they have. Um, they must, like, get paid for placing kids or something. I don't know exactly how it works. Um, but to me, like... Especially with our case now, there are so many other people that need to see them that it would be easier if um, this set of people could just come and talk to me. And our last agency would do that. Like, they would just come and see me because the girls just didn't like having other people in the house. Like, today they're frustrated that they have to, that somebody's coming to the house today. Um, so it's just one more person that has to see them. And I feel like it makes them feel odd. Um, and I could they don't need to see them. Like, the state caseworker who technically has legal custody of them, that person needs to see them. Their guardian ad litem needs to see them. Um, licensing agency, I personally, I don't think that they, it's a need. Um, and it's not a bad thing. And it's not that, like, I love our, our licensing worker is awesome. And I, she's great. She doesn't try to, um, she didn't try to give me parenting advice, which is helpful because a lot of licensing workers are really young. Um, so, and she's really new. So she knows that, like, she, I've been at this longer than she has, basically. Um, but she inserts, like, maybe this could help or we could do this. or it's, So she adds to the conversation, but she doesn't try and, like, make me feel inferior. And sometimes our previous agency would do that not on purpose they're just trying to like I don't know how to put this I don't know I just felt like I wasn't respected as an adult if that makes sense so and it wasn't intentional it was just one of those things where our licensing worker was brand new we were like her first family and I don't know I I loved her too. I really did think she was great and she has a really awesome story which I hope she gets comfortable sharing with people or I hope she has become more comfortable sharing it with people because she's going to help a lot of people out with that story but there were just things that was like there was just drama and I don't do drama. I'm a very like to the point kind of person. It's part of why our staff works so well together because we're all really informed. We all know what our jobs are. We all stay in our lanes. We all respect each other's opinions. Um, and yeah, so yeah. that's that's I've, I know I've talked about this before. That's the like level of control you have as a foster parent, though. Like you you can make certain decisions, and if you're not getting served in the way that you think best fits you or the needs of your family, you can change agencies. It's really not that complicated. Um, so yeah, I'm sure most of the time people don't have any trouble. Um, we just, and we, not that we had trouble, I just wasn't a fan of how they handled things administratively. I'm very administratively minded. Um, it's something I'm pretty good at, so I get frustrated when things aren't handled appropriately and that's a leadership issue that's not a one person one worker issue it was for us it was strongly like it was a leadership issue um 
unfortunately, because it was with we had that problem with multiple people in that organization all the way up. Like I talked to the director of the agency. She came to our house at one point because we were having so much discourse about it. So yeah, um, licensing coming to visit. Meh. <laughs> Um, yeah, I know our agency is really awesome. I, I, I can't say enough how much I like, I value our new agency just because like they have behavioral, um, staff that can come out and help you. So if your services get delayed or whatever, they, they can provide that, um, support until you get services that you need in place. They're just, it's a really good agency. We're with a place to call home now. That's who we're with now. So, um, they are all the way in Mesa. So, it, they're, if you're on the east side of the valley, they're going to be close, which is convenient because they do offer a lot of good training and stuff. Um, but even if you're not on the east side of the valley in Phoenix, I would, I would, I would say that the trip is worth it. The drive is worth it because they're at every court appointment. They are at every, um, child and family team meeting they um make sure that like all of if we have any significant incident reports that have to go out so that's anytime like a child self-harms a child is hurt a child has an issue at a visit any anything that happens that is unusual that can cause injury or um, damage to the child you have to fill out what's called a significant incident report and they will actually like review the report and give you feedback on it to try and like make sure that it doesn't sound that you don't misrepresent yourself because the people who read these, I would love to meet some of them. I I can tell you most of them are probably not foster parents um, and they're just doing their job. Um, so you need to make sure that you're very clear and concise and that you're not putting in these reports that something, um, you're not writing these reports from your perspective and then them getting twisted into something else. So, yeah, I can do a whole other thing about significant incident reports, but that's just, that's what's going on for us today. Um, let me know what you guys think about um, me doing a video about significant incident reports and what you kind of have to do and what they're for. I do think they're vital uh, in protecting yourself, but yeah, I'll go, I can just go over like in detail the paperwork that you have to do. So, let me know if you think that would be a good video. Um, and also... We have a friend who got a new puppy this um, yesterday. Like I wanted, I would have loved to have taken him, but we have a zoo already, and he's adorable. I have to go let him out later, so I might see if she'll let me post something about post him in a video because he's super cute. Um, but yeah, please subscribe if you haven't already. I know that like a three quarters of the people that watch aren't subscribed, so if you um, feel like you want to keep up with us and our journey. Um, feel free to just subscribe so you'll get notifications when we upload and stuff like that. Um, and thanks for the support. I know you guys, there's not, I haven't gotten a lot of comments, but I have gotten a few. And it's been really nice knowing that, like, other people are seeing these videos and, and considering being a foster parent. I think it's, it's, it's really what I'm hoping that will come from this is good people who should be foster parents, um, consider doing it. Bye guys.